What's up, guys? This is your boy DZD, aka the Drink King, Purple World Entertainment, live from the Dungeon Palace Studios once again. Thank you guys so much for clicking on part two of our two part video tutorial. We're going to jump right into the video, guys, but before I do that, I just want to make sure that if you guys have not watched the first part of this two part video series, then I'm going to leave a link in the video description. That way, you guys can check out the first part of this and you can get up to speed with where we are now. So, again, we're working in the Reaper software. And in this video, I'm going to show you my signal flow and what audio goes to what tracks and why it's so important that I route my audio in this manner when I mix my beats. You're also going to get to see what plugins I put on my master channel and why it's so important that I have these plugins plugins operable within my session. So without saying too much, let's jump into part two of this two part video tutorial. Let's do it. All right, now that I have everything set up, I'm going to go it on and I'm going to create my signal flow. It's halfway done already, but I need to I need to continue it. So my signal flow goes from tracks to the buses the buses, the instrument bus and the drum bus to my mix bus. That's where everything is going. Now what I want to do is I want to take my mix bus and I want to route that now to my print track. And then I want to take the mix bus out of the master. Okay, now that's out of the master and everything is playing through my, through my, my print track. So now it's going from tracks to drum bus and instrument bus. These buses are now going to the mix bus. The mix bus is now going to my print track. Let's go on and color code the, the print track. I mean, the uh, mix bus. I'll do that red because I want everything to stop there. Red stop and then green for the print track because everything is going to be printed there. OK, now I'm going to show you why I route this to a print track. The reason why I do that is because now I have control over how I want this mix bus to be recorded into my software. If I just rendered straight off of the mix bus or straight off of the master track, and I don't have that much control. So I like to print my tracks when the mix is done. I print it on an on a track. And the way I do that is all I do is this is my print track down here. You go to record, you right click on it and then you go to record output. I want to record the output of the track onto the track and then I want to record in stereo. So that switches this to record anything that's coming into this track. It's going to record on this track right here. So when I engage this record track right here, now I'm ready to go ahead on and record anything that's coming through this signal right here, which is all of this off of the mix bus. It's going to be recorded. So check it out. So I can go out and record any of the, my tracks that are coming off of here and they're all going to be recorded right here. Now, the reason why I like to record and print tracks right here is because now it gives me free automation. I can do my freehand automation in anything I want to lower, anything I want to bring out as the track is being printed. I don't have to draw an automation and do all that kind of stuff like that. Some automation you want in your track to where it happens when the track is going on. And that's a, that's a mixing trick that I learned from some top engineers. They freehand automate. And the way they do it is they print tracks down. That way, let's say in a break, you know, I want the hi-hats to be just a little bit softer than normal. I can literally, while a track is recording, I can literally go to the hi-hat track right here and just drop the volume down just a little bit while it's recording. You know, that way the hi-hats kind of fade into the background while the track is being recorded. Then I can just simply double click and bring it back to the regular volume level that I want. You know, once the track carries on. So I can literally do freehand automation as it's being recorded into the actual beat. And that is absolutely awesome whenever you have compressors going on on your track, whenever you have things like that that are running on your track, sometimes those compressors, they're compressing the whole entire track and they're hitting these drum peaks. And then when those drum peaks are gone, like in an intro or a break, then that compressor raises your instrument sounds because it no longer has those drum sounds to act off of. So it, ends, it ends up raising your instrument sounds in just that particular part of the beat. So you want to be able to grab that volume fader right here on the instrument bus. You want to be able to grab that volume fader. And as soon as that happens, boom, you just you just lower it down just a little bit. Now your instruments blend into the track. And then whenever the track comes back to its normal, its normal pattern, then you just go on and raise it back up. 
So printing a track gives you all types of different avenues that you can now control your, your track live as it's happening. You can do it while it's being recorded, while it's being printed on this track. And then all you do is just simply drag it, whatever mix you have, you just drag it down to a different track. And then once you're done with it, you just go ahead on and mute it. You can hit mute here. And now you have that track as a print track and it's just going to sit there whenever you want. So you can literally have six or seven different print tracks of your mixes, one with the tag, one without a tag. You can have one that's a that's a small, a small snippet if you want. It just has like, you know, a minute and a half of the beat. You can print that out and you can literally have different mixes all down here. And you will be able to go on and send those out however you want to. So that's the benefit of having everything routing to a print track instead of going on and go ahead on and just render everything right off the master or right off of a track. You have control over live automation, live volume changes, live panning, anything you want to do. You have control over doing that while a track is being recorded. OK, so now that I have my signal flow good, all of everything is routed to where it needs to be. Um, and I'm able to print the different mixes if I want. This print track is now going to the master. That's where you hear all the sound. Now I'm going to show you what I do to the master. This, these are the only plugins that I put on my master. My master channel does not serve as a mixing channel. All of my mixing happens on the mix bus. That's where I put my effects and what I want to do to make the beat nice. But anything that I put on a master is just reference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just the plugins that I use. So the first thing that I put on the master is of course my soft clipper i make sure that my clipper is there and my, my soft clipper serves as a a guideline it's going to keep my track from clipping and it's also going to give my track that little crunch that i want that extra little little sizzle that i want in it well, when it performs what i do is i take this and i put it on simple soft clip i want a soft clip see how it curves that it curves this right here this is hard and this is soft so I just want a little bit of a soft clip that way it doesn't it doesn't affect my track too much, but it still keeps it under control. So that serves as a guideline, my soft clipper. The next thing that I want to go and get is I want to have my isotope imager on there. Now, what the imager is going to do is it's going to serve as a nice way for me to see my stereo widening. Check it out. This, gonna, this is going to tell me with all of the processing that I'm doing on my track, my reverbs, anything that I'm putting on a track, if my stereo field is getting too wide or if it's where it needs to be. So I have a reference for that now. Next, I'm going to go it on and I'm going to put this plugin for mastering the mix. It is called Reference. And what Reference does is Reference now allows me to drop a track that's just like mine. That sounds like mine, any track, it could be from off of the Internet, any track that's professionally mixed. Or if I have a track that is professionally mixed, then I'll drop it in here as a reference. And I'm able to go back and forth from the reference track to my mix and see if it fits that same exact thing. It's always good to reference your sound. You need to do that. That way you can kind of get an idea of where you want your sound to be. If you're just mixing your track and you're not listening to anything that you want your sound to be like, then you don't know if the moves you're making are good or if they're up to the quality of of a track that's actually mixed very, very well. So this allows me to do that. All you do is just drop in a track like it says drop files here. You would drop in any track you want that sounds like yours, any professional track that sounds like yours. It could be a song it'd be whatever. And then you can now switch back and forth. You can even loop different parts of your track right here. So I can loop a verse. I can loop a chorus. And just switch back and forth from my track and the reference track to see if I'm where I need to be. The next thing that I'm going to put on the, on the master channel is from that same company. And it's called Levels. This is an absolutely brilliant plugin. All this does is this will give me a guideline as to if my mix is out of whack in any one of these areas. So if my peaks are out of whack, this will light up red. If my LUFs are out of whack, this will light up red. If my dynamic range is out, of, is, is out of whack, dynamic range meaning if certain parts that hit high in my track and certain parts that hit low, those can't be too, too much different than each other. You have to have them in a space to where one is, is right above the other. So 
that dynamic range, this will light up red if my dynamic range is off, my stereo field, anything that's off in my track, this will let me know and it will light up red. Check it out. Now, as I said before, the reason why you don't see too much lighting up red is because I have a good sound that's coming out of the MPC software already. So I know that all of this is going to stay in its in its zone. But once I start mixing it and affecting it, all of this is going to change. And this is absolutely awesome when you guys get into mixing for professional platforms, for Google Play, Spotify, all of those streaming platforms like that. And you want to make sure that your mix is where it needs to be, especially when you get to the point to where you're mixing vocals, when you're mixing full entire songs for people. I do that and I also do it for different companies. So I need to make sure that my mixes are always on point and I need to have a guideline to follow. So these plugins always go on my master channel every single time. That way I can reference anything I want as I make moves inside of my software. Now you guys have a good idea of exactly what I do when I'm preparing my tracks to be mixed. Obviously, all it's left to do is just arrange this track, you know, make my different parts of it, the intro, verses, choruses, all of that stuff like that. And then I'm, I, I would start mixing my track and making sure everything is good. And this happens on every single beat, every single track that I mix, every single professional uh, production that I mix, anything that I do, I have the same exact workflow. And um, it has worked out for me beautifully um, for professional projects, projects that are streaming projects that are on television, anything like that, this has worked out for me beautifully and it has given me the exact sound that I need and that I require. This concludes our two-part video tutorial on how I get my session set up inside of my DAW when I start to mix my beats or any projects that I'm working on. Hopefully this video gives you an idea of how I process my tracks and it gives you a good format for what you can do inside of your own DAW. Yes, these same exact tips will work inside of whatever software you are using as long as your software offers these particular features. If you guys would like to learn more on how I achieve the sounds in my beats that you guys hear, then what I'm offering to you guys is my live video help sessions to where I can get more in detail with you guys one-on-one -on, -one on screen and that will absolutely help you guys in getting your beats to sound the exact way you want them to sound. A link will be in the video description. It is a very simple sign up process. That is my gift to you guys for supporting these videos and also to get you guys the knowledge that I have as well. Doesn't matter your level, it doesn't matter your skill, whether you're a beginner, whether you're a professional, it does not matter. We will work at your pace that way you can get a detailed understanding of more of what you saw in these videos. Now always remember, these tips that you see in these videos, they're not written in stone. Mixing is a process that you come up with your own workflow and the way you achieve your sound. In these videos, I just give you an idea of how I achieve my sound and what I do. So take the entire video or take bits and pieces of what you saw here and try them out in your own workflow. You never know, it just may work for you as well. I just wanna let you guys know that I also have my new sample pack that has just released it is called Blue Flame. It is an amazing sample pack. The beat that we used in these two videos are exactly the type of melodies that you will get in this melodic loop kit. That link will be in the video description so you guys can head on down to my website, check it out, and you can cop it for yourself. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is the Kid DZD, AKA The Drink Gang, Purple World Entertainment, live from the Dungeon Palace Studios, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.